Okay, everyone. This is Emulation 101. This is not a required course, so everyone who's here should want to be here. What? I thought this was required. Uh, I'm gonna call my stepdad. He's usually nicer about this kind of thing. Luckily, you're not the only one in the class joining us. We have other students joining us from the World Wide Web. Hey, everybody. Why is it? Why is it? Oh, that's how it is, I guess. In this class, you're gonna learn what emulation is, what tools you'll need, and how to get started playing your favorite games. And to keep things interesting, we'll have some guest speakers come in to tell you more. No, it's not required. I don't know if I'm gonna get the credits that I need. You, you gotta call the school and figure this out. Oh, come on, Glenn. It's time to be the dad that stepped up. I'm the only one in here. Come on, hang that up. Let's get started already. Emulation is when one computer or system is made to act like another computer or system. And that's it. One of the most popular use cases for this is to get a modern device like a computer to play games from older systems. Nintendo Switch Online is a perfect example of this. Getting a modern system to play games from old systems. Pop quiz! What's emulation? Uh... 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 uh Oh, there we go. Emulation is when you download Pokemon off the internet and play it on your computer. No! No, no, that's piracy. And you failed the pop quiz. <sighs> My real dad's gonna kill me. There's a stigma that emulation is illegal and bad and wrong. It's often conflated with piracy. Emulation is just the software you use to play your old games. The games themselves are called ROMs. Oh. Oh. Let's just start by getting a ROM. There's plenty that are free and available online and we'll get into all of those. Just go download the free demo for Good Boy Galaxy. It's a modern game made for the Game Boy Advance. So it comes as a Game Boy Advance ROM. You can also just purchase the whole game if you want. The point is, this is really easy to get. Next, you're gonna need an emulator to now play your brand new ROM file. And for that, you have a ton of options. If you have an iPhone, emulation could be as simple as going on the App Store and typing in Delta Emulator. Once you're in here, you just add one of the ROMs that you ripped, like for example, Good Boy Galaxy. Make sure you're under the GBA tab. There's other systems in here too if you swipe around. Then you just click Good Boy Galaxy, and now you're playing the game. You're playing a Game Boy Advance game right here on your iPhone. Of course, there's more in-depth tutorials if you want to do some more with this, but this is just the easiest way to get you started. Technically, Delta is what's called an emulation front end. You might have heard of RetroArch, which is also an emulation front end. It packages the emulators into what it calls cores. It does it all for you. This is great for 2D systems and some earlier 3D systems. You should look up a RetroArch tutorial for that specifically if you want to play lots of different systems. These emulation front ends are great if you want to do a bunch of stuff and don't want to think too hard. But I want to back up a bit. To make this easier to understand, I want you to think of each emulator as one system. So the first thing we're going to do is pick a system we want to play. And we'll focus on individual emulators for that system. For GameCube, use Dolphin. For SNES, use SNES 9X. For GBA, use MGBA. I'll leave a list here on screen for some recommendations. For the purposes of this, we're gonna try not to confuse you too much. We're just gonna try to keep it nice and simple and keep it to just the individual emulators. So I would say pick a system and then just Google it, what emulator you should use for that system. Just try to take special care to make sure you're on the emulator's official website. Unfortunately, this isn't always easy to find. You might have to dodge some nefarious download links on some of these sites. For that, it helps to have some security. The school resource officer could help with that. Security! And security! Security! You there! Do you like bologna? What? Someone keeps throwing bologna up at the ceiling lights in the cafeteria. Do you know anything about that? What? Ah, never mind. Have a good day, everybody. No, come back, come here, come here. These guys wanna know about getting emulators from some of these shady websites. Oh, okay, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Wait, no. 
Oh, sorry. All right, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Stay in school. Stay in school. Come on, we practiced this. Oh, sorry. I haven't done this since I was a real cop, but I know what we're, I know what we're doing. I know what we're talking about. Okay, kids, listen carefully. These are condoms. Get out. Get uh, out. All right, Get fine. Out. But if you hear anything about bologna, you're going to let me know, okay? I could smell it on you. Get out. All Get right. Out. Get out. Well, I was going to have him talk about using a VPN to go to some of these shady websites because this video is sponsored by Surfshark. VPNs can help you change your location so that you can access content that might otherwise be blocked in your country. VPNs can also help you encrypt your data so that nobody on your network can see what you're doing, not even your ISP. And this is very important for safety and privacy when you're navigating the World Wide Web. Surfshark One gets you their VPN, private web search, data leak alerts, and their antivirus, which can help you on some of these shady websites. There's no risk to trying Surfshark. They offer a free 30-day money-back guarantee. So go to surfshark.com slash den and use code den to get four extra months of Surfshark. Oh my God, I'm losing my mind. This is so complicated already. Okay, no, it's not. Let's roll it back a little bit. We'll make it easy. Let's say you want to play a Game Boy game like Pokemon. The first thing you'll want to do is download MGBA. Install that and then just configure whatever controller you want to use. Using the keyboard is totally fine too. Just configure that in the settings. Getting the game is actually not too hard. We already showed you how to get one free game you can play in an emulator, but for older physical retro games, there are devices specifically made for ripping old cartridges. The GB Operator is a favorite among retro fans. It makes ripping Game Boy and Game Boy Advance ROMs super easy. They just show up on your computer as a file. There's also the Save the Hero Builders Cart Ripper that can rip NES, SNES, Genesis, and N64 cartridges, as well as Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. These are both some of the great options you can use to turn your old retro games into ROMs that you can now play on your computer or any device you want. So I have to buy something else just to play these games? Well, I mean, there's other maybe even free ways you can rip some ROMs to play the games that you want. What? Like, itch.io? <laughs> yeah? Oh, thank God. Sorry, I'm late. Who's that? Oh, uh, okay. All right. No, you're right on time. We were just about to talk about how to get ROMs legitimately. Did you tell them about um, itch.io? Itch.io? I've never heard it pronounced like that. Okay, well, let, let's write that okay, down. Yes. Um, Itch.io is essentially a website where you can go and get a bunch of different games, including homebrew games. This is stuff that's, you know, not on the original consoles, but like a Game Boy game that was made yesterday, but still runs on like that kind of hardware. Is this good? Oof. Yeah, not bad. Okay, thank you. So one of the places that you can go to get games to play that would feel retro would be itch.io, not itch.io. And that's where you would go and find homebrew games like Good Boy Galaxy and that kind of thing. Then you have archive.org, which is where you would go and get old and defunct games, games that you know aren't really supported anymore or you can't really readily find available. There could be other stuff that you could find there as well. And then a really cool thing that you can do, there's this ROM extraction documentation project, which is all on GitHub. And basically it's a step-by-step -step process to take you through how you can get the ROMs out of the collections that you might buy on Steam, like the Mega Man collection or the Sega Classics collection. You can pull the ROMs out of that by following this project. And then you can take those ROMs and install them on other hardware that they weren't originally intended for. Wow, thanks so much for that, Bill. Do you want to stay for the rest of the class? Hard no. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of these bigger companies don't want you to rip these retro games from their software, even if you own this software. So it's a, it sometimes it's a little convoluted. They don't always make it easy to grab your games. Another great tool is like hacking a console like a 3DS or a Wii. These hacked consoles allow you to rip your games straight from the console. Then you can just put them right on your computer. Getting games off of your old consoles and onto your computer is a great way to preserve these old media that are dying. For example, the batteries in these Pokemon cartridges don't last all that long. 
It's also just fun to play these games on hardware that it wasn't intended for. It's usually more convenient to play them this way. But it also allows you to sometimes hack the game. Pokemon has some great tools for injecting whatever Pokemon you want into the game. There's some performance mods you can do to get games like Mario 64 or even Zelda to run just a lot better. So yeah, you can now take these retro games and play them on PC. Right now, a really popular way to play these retro games is these handheld emulation consoles or retro handhelds. I've seen my cousin got like one of those things. He got it at the gas station and has like 6,000 games on it and they're all versions of Mario 3. So yes, those exist and they're usually pretty terrible, but there are a decent amount of emulation handhelds. Sometimes they look like little Game Boys. Those usually have a bunch of games on it and some of those are actually pretty great. Pop quiz! Can anyone in the class name any emulation handheld? I I'm the only one here. Trimuli Brick. <laughs> Yes, Russ, thank you. Can you please tell the class about all the different devices you can use to play these emulation games? Yeah, hi. So there are many different types of handhelds you can do. There's like the really cheap stuff under hundred bucks. Then you have like the middle tier and then you've got the really high tier stuff, stuff like the Steam Deck. So at the very cheap level, you've got stuff that's under $100 and there's a ton of them. But I would say number one would be like the Ambernick devices. I cover a lot of those on my own channel, but then there's stuff like Pal Kitty and the Trim UI devices and whatnot. These are really cool because they don't cost a ton of money, but you can put a ton of games on them. They're gonna play up to like PS1 and below. So all your classic systems. And these are some of my favorite to play. A lot of them will run on a Linux based operating system, but there's also like custom firmwares you can add and stuff. I've got a lot of guides for that too. A lot of fun with that. At the middle here you have stuff that is going to be a little bit more expensive so around maybe the $200 price point but these will be Android based handhelds so these will allow you to play much more systems so you'll be able to play stuff like GameCube, PS2, uh, even some of you know that higher end stuff a little bit of like Nintendo Switch even. Oh that was sick! Then at the very high tier, you've got stuff like the Steam Deck. These are going to be PC handhelds. So they're basically laptops, but in a handheld form factor. So those will run Windows or if it's a, you know, a Linux based one, they can run Steam OS like the Steam Deck. And you can put all your emulators and all your games on that as well. And the sky's the limit for that. You'll probably be able to play anything as long as you can get your hands on a game file and be able to play it on that device. So it really depends on how much money you're looking to spend. You've got under 100 bucks. You've got, you know, a $200 range for the mid range stuff, and then you're looking at 500 plus dollars for those handheld PCs and it really comes down to what you want to try. So Russ, what's a good handheld to get if somebody just wants to get into, let's say, Game Boy Advance emulation? Yeah, so GBA is easy to emulate because it's an older system. So one of the cheaper ones would be great for that. So like an Ambernic RG34 XXSP. That one is like made for Game Boy Advance. Perfect screen for that. I like that one. That one. What was that? Everything all right in here? I heard a lot of commotion and Hey, aren't you the guy that got DMCA'd by Nintendo twice? <laughs> wow, uh, thanks Russ for coming. I'd ask you to stay, but you did just kill my brother. That, that was your brother? Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's fine. Uh, we do a podcast every Tuesday, He's still on the channel, but uh, nobody watches it anyway. Please leave. Okay, well, thank you for having me. Yep, appreciate not it. a problem. Go. Thank you. Bye. What am I going to tell my mother? Hey, do you the, want me to close the door? You can, no, that's fine. Thank you. Thanks. And now there's all these different handhelds made specifically just for playing these emulators and these ROMs. Isn't that neat? So to recap, emulators are the software you use to mimic old systems. ROMs are the games themselves, and they're a lot easier to get legally than you might think. Just Pick a retro system, download its corresponding emulator, and have fun. It's just that easy to start emulating at home. You know, when I started this class 20 minutes ago, I really didn't have a clue about any of this. Now, after hearing all you guys talk and get all excited about emulation and seeing that guy get eviscerated, I think I'm ready to stick around. I think I'm ready for the next course. Oh no, brother! Who's making my son take a class he doesn't want to take? It's you, isn't it, you big man? Glenn, no, 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 it's fine! I told you to call me daddy. Who's to blame for this? Why is there shoes on the floor chocked full of others, mind you? I almost swallowed my gum, you piss. 
No, no, no. I, I want I want to take the course now. Oh, you want to take the course now. I drove three hours from Toowoomba. You want to take the course it's now. It's been 20 minutes. Time's different in Toowoomba. Shut up. Oh, okay. Class, your homework is to download the Grimace game from McDonald's and put it on your Game Boy with a flash cart. Hey, teach. Thanks. You get your ass in that F-150 right now. Oh, and thank you too. I'll see you next time. Hey, turn off this webcast. This guy's gotta go check in on their Neopets. <laughs>